Emma Keeley, member for Lowen, thanks for joining us again on Flow. Uh, my pleasure. It's always great to speak to you and to your listeners. Uh, and we've had uh, some good news develop uh, over the last uh, 48 hours, I suppose. But just start us off with your communication with the government after their announcement about cross-border communities and vaccination. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise, I think, for particularly cross-border community members to hear South Australia's announcement that uh, vaccination would be a mandatory requirement for entry to South Australia from the 24th of September. And for many people in border communities on the Victorian side of the border, they found it very, very difficult to access the COVID vaccination. I know of some communities that have only received perhaps 40 doses a week for a catchment of 2,500 people. So that would take us into mid next year before they'd even able to access that first dose. Uh, Otherwise, they'd have to travel out of that 70k corridor uh, to go to uh, somewhere like Horsham or further afield to be able to get a vaccination. So we needed to see an exemption for those cross-border community members, which is great that we've we've been heard. Uh, It's not just me, it's lots of other people who were calling for it. So uh, South Australia has backflipped. Um, for a short period of time and uh, cross-border community members will be exempt from having to have a mandatory vaccination uh, when that comes into effect on the 24th of September. Yeah, that's a great work, great representation from yourself and a whole bunch of others, as you say. Uh, common sense has finally prevailed on that front. But tracking back just what you just talked about, about availability of vaccines, um, people have locked down at this point in time. I know they can leave to go and get a vaccination, I'm sure is one of the exempt reasons to be left leaving home. But the Andrews government haven't indicated there's any imminent lifting of restrictions. So you are captive to how many vaccines get into the district. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, The situation in Victoria is that we've got one million unused vaccines at this point in time. So the Fed supply the vaccines and then it's the state government's responsibility to distribute it around the state. And what we found is that most of those vaccines are centralised in Melbourne rather than coming out to uh, those border communities, which are smaller communities. It's often a little bit more difficult to set up a vaccination program where it's available full-time business hours, but they can't do it at the moment anyway because they're simply not getting enough doses of vaccine. So they're really short clinics and we need to see that support in place to make sure that if people want to get vaccinated, they can get vaccinated. Uh, Not the situation we've got at the moment where you either put at risk or cancel your cross-border permit because you can't travel outside the 70k zone or you can't get an appointment before, say, late October is what I'm hearing at the moment. So I'm asking for pop-up clinics in our rural communities along the border. It's what we're seeing in Melbourne at the moment. If it's good enough for Melbourne communities to get pop-up vaccination clinics, it should be good enough for uh, rural communities, particularly when the government's had so much time to plan for this. We've been calling for these uh, extra vaccination doses to uh, our border communities for a very, very long time, but it's now become urgent. Does this highlight, and I think it's a matter more so for across the border in South Australia, but does it highlight the the lack of a cross-border commissioner, someone who they have to consult with in their transition committee about these sorts of decisions? Look, it's different, I think, in Victoria than South Australia. Certainly, I found it an enormous support to be able to talk to the Victorian cross-border commissioner regularly about any issue that comes up, uh, whether it is a policy issue or those unique situations that we get of people who, you know, are desperate to cross the border, um, perhaps for, you know, to care for a family member. It might be to attend a funeral. Uh, It might just be because there's a last-minute change to the rules and they're stuck and sleeping in their car, which we're seeing happen more and more often along the border. We've got so many refugees stuck at the border. It's really horrible at the moment, to be honest. Uh, But Luke's always there, Luke Wilson. He's done a great job. He's always been on the phone. But we haven't got the good one in South Australia. Uh, And certainly I think that would assist. And also just having someone who is, you know, represents rural communities, who understands what it's like to live two sides of an imaginary line and can provide that voice and a bit of reason to some of the decisions that are being made about uh, 
border rule. Just on refugees you mentioned there, um, who are these refugees? What's the situation there? Yeah, we've got a situation where we've got what we're calling refugees or strandees are stuck at the border, the Victorian side of the border, who've been caught out by some of the recent changes to South Australia's border entry requirements, particularly around the need to have a health exemption. Um, so people have been coming across to the border and then they've been told, no, you now need to have a health exemption. And because it's got such a great backlog, I think there's about 9,000 applications uh, waiting to be looked at. It's about a five-week wait. And we've had horrible situations of young families, parents, you know, who's got a one-year-old child and a dog sleeping in their car for days, another family who had a three-year-old with special needs, again, sleeping in the car for a couple of nights, and there's simply no support available for them. Uh, we're asking the Victorian government to step up and make sure that these people aren't just left abandoned without any support. They've got no home. They're often moving house is the reason that they're stuck at the border. So they've got nowhere in Victoria to go. They can't get into South Australia and they're literally stranded. So um, we want the South Australia to process those applications with far more prominence. And I know that Nick McBride uh, recently made changes to make sure that, that those health exemptions were dealt with much more quickly. Uh, but also we need to make sure that the Victorian government is stepping up and we have a humanitarian side of how we deal with this pandemic because rule changes are one thing, um, but we need to make sure that we're actually looking after people as well. Now, can I touch base on something else yeah, where you've joined with some members uh, in your own area and also across the border in advocating for recognition of a negative COVID test across the border. Uh, has there been any movement on that front? We've got this situation where the Victorian government will only recognise a COVID test result if it's been tested in Victoria. And the same goes for South Australia. They'll only accept a COVID test result if it's tested in South Australia. And it's simply crazy they're doing that. All of our laboratories, which are often run by the same companies, they're all accredited by NASA. Uh, they all have to undertake the same quality assurance and same quality controls. Uh, they all are TGA-approved tests, and they're probably all exactly the same test, to be honest. So there's absolutely no reason why our governments don't just rely on our NASA accreditation system in the same way we would if somebody had a, you know, a result which shows that they had a heart attack or that uh, they were anemic. Why aren't we just giving some credence and why are there political games when it comes to COVID test results? We just need a bit of common sense to avail and I'm sure it's just a letter of agreement, but it's really important that we get that done, particularly for our truckies who are finding it really difficult to keep up with all of the testing requirements, and particularly when it comes state by state. Now, speaking of trucks, there was a situation at the Queensland-New South Wales border where the trucks blocked the highway so in protest about the COVID rules. I understand you might have had a different kind of blockade or collection of trucks in your electorate recently. Yeah, it appears the South Australian government have changed the rules so that they no longer need evidence of a COVID test to cross the border. They need the actual result. And this has heavily impacted on our truckies who are finding it hard to keep up with the ever-changing and the very frequent COVID testing requirements anyway. Uh, so I know along the Western Highway and on the Glenelg Highway as well, near Casterton, uh, trucks were being stopped at the border, turned around, and for the Western Highway, they had to drive all the way back to Horsham uh, Hospital, which is the nearest COVID testing site. Uh, they had to drop their trailer, find a park around the hospital, which is already impossible if you're just driving a vehicle, get tested and then drive the 150 k's back to the border. It's just been such a big inconvenience for our truck drivers and often it's our truckies and those cross-border community members who just aren't thought about when it comes to some of these rule changes which, which appear quite small but they have enormous ramifications and we just need more thinking time about it. We need to make sure that we're prepared and I guess from, from my perspective what we've put in place is we've got a warning sign now on the entry into Horsham so that truckies can see that Horsham is the last testing stop on the way through to the border uh, but I've also called on the Victorian Minister for Health to immediately set up uh, vaccination hubs and COVID testing hubs along the border highways to make sure that truckies can get a COVID test close to the border, that they can easily access vaccination as well in preparation for the South Australian rule that you must be vaccinated, uh, but also to make sure our cross-border community members can access that testing requirement and access their vaccinations too. 
Yeah, it's a sign of the times, I suppose. Uh, there have been signs for some time about this is the last petrol station for a long time. Uh, now we've got to say this is your last testing station for a while. Yeah, it might be something we have to look at as permanent signage. But look, I, I just hope that we finally get a plan for all of this to end. Uh, we now have national cabinets agreement uh, where all the premiers have signed up to say if we get to 70% vaccination rate, lockdowns will be eased a little. If we get to 80% population vaccinated, uh, then lockdowns will be a very rare thing. Uh, but we've seen all the premiers walk away from that. Uh, we need to have some hope. We need some certainty of what's going to happen in the future. When will our schools reopen? When will we be able to just cross the border freely? And uh, how can we achieve that? And you know, more than anything at the moment, I, I think that's what we all need. It would help our mental health to understand what comes next and when does this end and when do we get our lives back. And I think that's my biggest advocacy is to make sure that we have a clear plan around uh, how we deal with this pandemic and how we get out of it. Well, it's a, quite a contrast, isn't it, between New South Wales, where Premier Berejiklian uh, has said, uh, once we get to 70%, things are going to open up no matter what, no matter how many cases. But that's not what we're hearing from the Victorian Premier. No, we're certainly not. The Victorian Premier has actually walked back and we've even heard talk in in the daily press conferences about a 90% vaccination target. Now, a lot more work needs to be done from the government in terms of uh, advertising around vaccinations. We don't see any advertising at all from the state government. I'm concerned they're saving it up until uh, later this financial year when they can use it for electioneering, which I think would be an absolute disgrace when there's an important health message to get out. Uh, We haven't even got a centralised booking system to make a vaccination appointment. Uh, The state don't include the federal government's booking sites or their hubs. They don't include GP clinics or pharmacies. Uh, The feds do, fortunately. Uh, We haven't seen the fair distribution of vaccines across the state. It's, It's just still a bit of a mess, to be honest, even though we're 18 months into this pandemic. But... Look, it's strong advocacy, not just of mine, but of a lot of people, particularly those who live along across the border. We keep on raising the profile of these issues, and thanks to, you know, great media uh, like Flow FM, you guys really help to shine a light on some of the issues and to facilitate some change and make sure we're not forgotten just because we're not in Melbourne. Thanks again for joining us on Flow today. Always a pleasure.